Welcome to Fit for Life. I'm back. This is our 10th show. My name is Karen McKenzie. I think most of you know that. I'm a senior fitness person. That's what I do. A lot of senior fitness. Um, and I'm just having a great time with this show and I'm just so happy to do it so that you folks can view it in your own homes. And as I said, it's number 10 and I just can't believe it. The time is going so fast. Uh, today, what I'd like to talk about a lot, not, we're not going to do a lot of physical activity, we will do some, um, about um, the basic fitness components again. I'd like to just bring them together for you. And I think probably most of you know them by heart because I've said it a million times. Um, strength training is vital. I think that probably is the most important one to you because if you don't have strength, you can't really do anything. You can't do the cardio, the cardio and the stretching. So the strength is very imperative. So we do strength training, stretching. Uh, most people don't like to stretch, but that's really important, especially after strength training, because you're contracting muscles and you need to stretch them out. So that's very important. And cardio, which is what? What's cardiovascular exercise? It's walking, it's running, it's swimming, it's, it's playing tennis, it's a whole lot of things. To get the heart rate up, get the blood up to your brain, uh, exercise is also good for your brain. I mean, that alone should make you want to exercise. Because every time we forget something, we say, well, it's old age and there's nothing we can do about it. But that's not true. I'm not saying it takes away the forgetfulness, but it should improve it. It's really important. So those are the top three. Strength training, flexibil flexibility, cardiovascular exercise, and then we also need proper nutrition. Um, are you eating some vegetables daily, some fruits daily, if you can? Um, you should also eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, not the same ones every day. This is basic information. Uh, your doctor will tell you how to eat, or your nutritionist, your registered dietitian. Those are the experts. Those are the people you should listen to. So that's basic information. Uh, drinking water, uh, not drinking too much alcohol. Um, for most people, a glass of wine is okay or one drink. Uh, it seems to me that men can drink a little bit more than us and not be damaged. So um, again, you can check into that for yourself. Uh, also, balance. Balance goes with aging. And that's from having what? Weak muscles. So that's another reason to do strength training. Another reason I think strength training is, is the most important fitness component. Also managing your stress. We're gonna do a little bit of that today. Uh, we're gonna do something called mindfulness meditation. Uh, I believe we did a little, a little bit of that in the last class. So uh, those are your six fitness components and we need all of them. Oh, one more thing that's really good for the brain is learning something new. Um, I was learning or taking Spanish classes in college. I did pretty well on pronunciation. It was the verbs that killed me, but I still have the book. So I think I'm gonna go back to that. Learning anything new. Um, join a book club. Um, go to Tower Hill. Um, Plant a garden, uh, read a book about something you know very little about. Uh, just anything that you haven't done before or take up an old hobby. I keep saying I'm going to knit, even with the arthritis, I'm sure I can still do a little knitting. But I am gonna get back to my Spanish. Let's see, I've been saying that for about two years, but I'm gonna do it. And I hope you'll do something like that for yourself too. So I wanna do um, a brief review of what I'm talking about. What is strength training? Strength training is, if you have your weights with you, and I'm hoping for each, each show that you watch, you'll have these things ready. Your weights, your free weights, and your exercise bands. And we'll just do a little example of each. So let's start with the strength training uh, and do something for uh, what we hear the most about, the muscle that we seem to talk about first, at least, is the bicep. So let's try it together. Elbows into the body for support and breathe out as you lift. You can lift pretty fast, slowly down. How does that feel? Breathing out, oh, maybe if you do it all the time, you won't feel anything. It's too easy, maybe you need a heavier weight. 
and it should be three, two sets, um, eight to 12 repetitions. We do about 10. So let's say this is four coming up. Breathing out, up. You breathe out on exertion. Try it again. Five. Slowly down. This is where you gain the strength, controlling that second movement. It's easy, right? Breathing out. And one. I, I can say these things in my sleep. Starting again up. We'll say this is eight. Slowly down. Let's do 10 today. These are bicep curls. We're curling the arms up and then slowly down. Look at your bicep. You'll see definition there, won't you? Try it again. So this is one small example of strength training. Uh, if you go to a gym, keep going to a gym at least twice a week. But you need a couple of days in between for those muscles to heal. They tear a little bit, especially when we lift heavier weights than usual. And they need a day or two to heal themselves. So that's why you don't do strength training two days in a row. Not for the same muscle group, anyway. So now we've talked about strength. We know how important it is, especially with aging. It doesn't get better. It really doesn't. If you do nothing, uh, you can lose half your strength by age 70. So think about age 80. Just keep that in mind. Maybe I'll scare you a little bit into exercising more. So that's, that's strength training. And we can do strength training, as I said, with machines. Or we can do them with bands. I'm going to use the blue band today. And I think what I'll do is I'll give you a strength exercise as well as a posture exercise. Upper body muscles must be strong for good posture, right? And for everything else we do. You want to stay independent? Holding on to the ends, you're going to lift up. I love this one because the band makes it easy. If you don't feel any resistance here when, when the band stretches, then you move the hands a little closer together, right? Up. So what you would do is um, breathe out on that first movement through the mouth, and then back. Just don't hold your breath. Rem remind yourself. It reminds you not to hold your breath. Four. I think that's four. Isn't this fun? And back. And down. I'm going to be so strong today. Wonderful. Feel those shoulder blades come together, the scapular muscles back there. Up and back. Try one more. So we can use bands for strength. We can strengthen our legs standing up and doing exercises standing up. Um, so mostly what we've done is, or all of it has been done for the upper body. As far as the legs, we're not going to stand up and do um, strength training for the legs right now. But just, I'm going to come forward a little, slide forward. You can still put your back against the chair. Just lift your leg up. Just lift it up like that. How long can you hold it up there? I mean, I can't get any more basic than that, right? Holding it up, holding it up. I can feel it. It's starting, it's starting. Oh, boy. Wow. Remind me to do a stretch for this pretty soon, okay? Up. Try the other side. One side is usually stronger, weaker than the other, right? Nice and tall. So you're strengthening. What are you strengthening? This. This is very important. Getting up and down, in and out of a car. Reaching over, grabbing something on the floor if you're standing, you know, from up to down is pretty, pretty difficult sometimes. And you're also tightening your abdomen here. But we're going to have to stretch these out after, okay? Another way to strengthen the lower body would be straight out. You're going to flex your foot back. Easy. Bounce it. You're also stretching the calf, tightening your abdomen, strengthening and tightening your quadriceps. Easy. I'm not counting or anything, but you should do at least 10, 10 or so. So two movements would be one. So it would be one, two, like that, all right? Try the other side. You're going to flex. You're, by flexing, I mean bringing the foot closer to the head or to your leg and bouncing one, two, really tightening here and four. So we don't need equipment. They're great if you have a, equipment available to you. If you go to a health club, Oh, you own your own equipment. That's fantastic. You have your own little gym. Beautiful. So these are two very simple, simple exercises that you can do. Um, so the second component 
basic fitness component is stretching or flexibility. But we need to stretch these out right here, right now. So I'm going to have you sit up straight. I'm going to turn the body a little bit. So you're on an angle here. And you do have to come closer to the end of the seat. And just do that. So the, the leg closest to me, or your television. Reaching down and lifting up. But look at my posture. It's horrible. Nice and tall. Pull that chin in. Pull back. Oh, boy. Can you feel it? Some people can do this standing. You can do this lying down in bed if you want to do those exercises that we do a lot of. Pulling back, pulling back. I can feel that. If it hurts, you don't feel comfortable anywhere, please stop. Always check with your doctor before you start any exercise program. Keep that in mind. That's, that's really important. All right, so that's the quadricep. But we need to stretch the hamstring back here, right? So why don't we do that? So just bring the leg that was back there, same leg, bring it forward. Nice and straight, toes up, keep your back straight. I don't want you to do this. I want you to keep the back straight and come forward. You're stretching the hamstring here. Wonderful, wonderful. So now, oh, doesn't it? Well, I don't know if it feels good. If, if it's very tight, it isn't going to feel good. But um, it's a very basic leg stretch, flexibility exercise, it's important to do. Then you can round over if you want. And you see, I can hardly get my, my hand down there because I haven't done this lately. I do exercise, but I don't always do everything I should be doing. But if I keep doing it, and the, the more I do it, even if it was just today, I would be able to get my hand down there. So let's try the other side. You're gonna kind of switch. Um, bring your knees over a little bit. Leg closest to me, you're gonna put in back. Posture, reaching down for your ankle or your shin, lifting up and pulling back, nice and tall. All right. Um, what I usually give in my classes is, is for those that can do it, to let go of the chair and reach forward and back at the same time, and you're stretching your whole body, basically, almost, not all, but most, most of it. Reaching forward and pulling back at the same time. Oh my gosh, you're stretching, it's like the rack in medieval days, the rack. But it's not the rack for us, right? So dropping down. So what's the third component? You know how I'm talking about walking? Take that 10 minute walk, go to a park, walk, um, walk in a mall. There's a group of people that do mall walking. Keep that in mind. Put on some music and dance. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little test, a little test today. I'd like you to stand up. And I'm going to stand right here. I know you can all see me. Just do a little marching. Uh, this does put pressure on this area. So if you can't do running in place like I'm doing right now, you can just march. March. I'll lift the knee up one. This is good. Just this simple exercise is good for balance. I didn't plan on mentioning it with this, but it is. But what I'd like you to do uh, is look at a clock, look at your watch, whatever you have available, and I'd like you to run in place right where you are for one minute. Now, I'm going to have to count to myself, okay? So let's get started, and now we'll start counting. One, three, four, five, six. I'm counting to myself. Keep going. You're almost halfway there. If you're, if you're a walker, this will be nothing. Now, I know my count is off, but stop when I stop. Okay, that's about a minute. Some people cannot do that. They are so out of breath. It's just a little test that you can do for yourself. Um, again, if you have COPD, or a physical problem, um, and you're not supposed to do that, you would know enough not to do that. <laughs> but, or you could just be um, not fit, and you've, you know you've got to do something. So the, the most basic thing you do is walking. So try to walk five minutes the first time, 10 minutes. Uh, the Surgeon General still says half an hour of exercise daily, if possible. And that's 
But that means all kinds of exercise. Do you do gardening? Um, are you babysitting for grandchildren? I mean, that, that takes a lot of moving around and lifting that kind of thing. Um, so back to the first fitness component, um, just remember that that is the most important one. And it doesn't strengthen just your muscles. It also adds density to your bones. So for people with maybe um, early, what they call osteopenia, um, early osteoporosis, strength training will make the bones more dense. Again, you've really got to check with your doctor because if, if, if you have serious or more serious osteoporosis, he may say, don't do any of that. But uh, for the average person with maybe just the beginning of it, check with your doctor. It will strengthen your bones. It'll make them more dense um, and less apt to break. So just keep that in mind. So that's three basic fitness components. We talked a little bit about nutrition, uh, drinking enough water. Um, as far as your brain goes, as I said before, learn something new. Um, manage your stress somehow. Um, just putting music on sometime will help you to relax. That yoga breath that I've been talking about in, in the classes uh, is very important to take a yoga class. Uh, try to learn meditation if you can. Um, I would like to spend uh, a few minutes today talking about something called mindfulness meditation. And I used to think it was kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you, because I didn't understand it. It's just a simple act of that yoga breathing, finding a quiet place, and turning off that constant chatter that we all do. We're always worried, and now we have more to worry about. And, and worrying doesn't make anything better, does it? But if you can learn to relax and clear your mind, you'll be healthier overall mentally and physically because the mind, uh, the mind and the body are connected. So that, I think most of you know that too. But this is a wonderful book that I found. Uh, I was lucky to find this. Uh, Moments of Mindfulness. It says find a little stillness in a busy world, in a crazy world today, right? But we, we don't have to lose it. We can, we can still stay healthy. And these are one of the tools that you can use to do that. Um, I, I do want to read one paragraph, I hope you don't mind, um, because they can explain it much better than I can. The message of mindfulness is as important now as it was three and a half thousand years ago when the Buddha first delivered it to a community experiencing great economic change and the old religions were being questioned. Sounds like today, doesn't it? When people were searching for a new spirituality, doesn't necessarily mean religion. This is not religion, it's like yoga. They're not religions, it's just, it's more of a spirituality. We too are living through a period of great social change. Wow, that's true. And there's a growing desire to wake up to what is going on in our lives, in our communities, and across the planet, to take responsibility for ourselves and our environment. The aphorisms collected in this book gently affirm that living mindfully helps us achieve that desire. So we're doing something for ourselves, let's do something for the world, and I think we're all thinking about that now, and uh, people are coming together more. Uh, that's what I hope for, that um, we will see that we have problems that we have to, we have to work out. We can't, we can't always say it's someone else's problem and it doesn't have anything to do with us because that isn't true. So let's, let's relax just for a minute, grab some water. And I think I'd like to end with um, a very simple meditation. Cheers. If you haven't done this before, please try it. It's easy. It's just something different that you can do. Again, it's not new. It's thousands of years old. And yes, religion, some religions a lot of them do, uh, do meditate, but meditation itself is not a religion, just so you'll know. All right, get comfortable though. You, you can't sit up straight. I'm just gonna push myself forward a little bit. Legs out kind of straight, and just, just move your feet back and forth a little bit, just, just to loosen up those legs, good. You can let your chin drop down. As long as you can hear me, you're okay. Most people close their eyes when they meditate. There's, there are many different ways to meditate. 
Some people do it with their eyes open. They do it when they're walking. Um, I think I would walk into a tree if I was meditating while I was walking. But right now we're going to let the chin drop down. And we're going to take a breath. And as you breathe up through your nose, your head will rise a little bit. So let's breathe up through the nose to the count of at least four. Hold that breath for two seconds. And exhale through your mouth. You can make that noise if you want. No one can hear you, especially if you're alone. All right, I hope you're still breathing out. We can get back to our regular normal breathing right now. But this will help you to get into that meditative state. It actually changes your brain waves when you do this kind of breathing. It's true. Let's try it again. Breathing up, a little bit longer this time, up through the nose. Holding and breathing out or exhaling through the mouth. Keep it longer than the inhalation. So if you're still breathing out, let's do another couple of seconds. And now we're gonna just stay down there and relax for a minute. And very gently, just move your head from side to side as if you're doing that ear drop we did. I think we did it in the last couple of classes, good. And you know what? I mean, I know I'm taping a, a television show and there's a certain, not anxiety, but you know, you want everything to be just right. And I'll tell you, I feel a little better right now. And I know it's because of that breath. So let's do one more together. Breathing up through the nose, holding it and exhaling through your mouth. Keep exhaling, let your chin drop right down. You can move your feet back and forth if you want. You can circle your hands and then just allow your hands to rest in your lap. And as we relax and keep our eyes closed, I'm gonna do a little reading, very short, very, very short. It says approaching stillness if we allow ourselves to be constantly lost in our thinking minds, we will forever be in conflict, always ill at ease. Hmm. Oh, we might as well read the next page here. Finding balance means accommodating change. That is the basis of adaptation. I believe that's uh, the coping meta the coping that some people do very well and some don't. The Buddha taught that our chief troubles come from not being content with what we have. I guess that means we should be thankful. I'm gonna try one more. You can take another breath if you'd like right now. And then exhale slowly. Pleasurable and painful thoughts and emotions will come and go all the time. We can't hold on to them. We need to push them away or make them stay away. All we can do is accept them and remember that we can be comforted by the fact that everything changes. And now what I'd like you to try is one more thing. With your eyes closed, I'm gonna have you do another yoga breath in a few seconds here. And at the end of that breath, I'm not gonna say anything. I want you to try to think about nothing for just 10 seconds. So let's take that breath together, breathing all the way up through the nose, holding that breath and exhaling. Good, and open your eyes. Were you able to quiet your mind? I find it very difficult, and this is why meditation, um, I don't want to say it should be practiced daily, but maybe it should, or as often as you can. Uh, you know, to do it once a month isn't gonna give you much benefit. But try, you know, try to keep that in mind. Uh, try to find a place to take a course. It's everywhere, it's in, well, it's in senior centers, at least virtually now. Take a course, read a book, 
um, talk to someone that does it. It really will. It really will be good for you. It's really important that you do that. All right. Now, what I'd like you to do is just place your elbows on the chair. Just circle your hands, nice and easy. Good. And then we'll go the other way. All right. Bring each finger to your thumbs. Two, three, four, and go back. Five, six, seven. Just keep alternating fingers, bringing them to your thumb, just to relax your hands a little bit. You were holding on to the bands before and the weights. We're just going to loosen them up. Great. And now I'd like you to splay your fingers and then close them. So this is stress. This is relaxation. Stress. Relaxation. Stress. It's not that simple, is it? <laughs> but it's just kind of an example of how it feels to be tense and tight and then how you can just let it all go. And we'll try it again, closing the hands. Good. And then open. Wonderful. Come forward in the chair. We're almost finished here. I just wanted to give you like a recap of all the things we've been doing on the, on the last 10 shows. Some things will be repeated like your strength training, that's important. Your flexibility and your cardio. And if we don't do that, I'm hoping you'll take a walk. But right now, let's just kind of stretch the whole body a little bit. Coming forward, we'll do our spinal stretches. You can keep your head up. Great. And normally, we stay longer in each position. Now clasp your hands, and then we'll bring those arms up. Wonderful. So we just flexed the spine. Now we're extending it. And we can extend it even more by just grabbing a wrist, pulling it up toward the ceiling, good. And then grabbing the other wrist, pulling it up toward the ceiling, great. All right. Wonderful. Sit back a little bit. This hand, cross over. Let's do spinal rotation. We're going to do them rather quickly. We're almost at the end. Wow. It goes fast. And then we'll turn to the other side. Good. Last thing is we'll do a little bend. Great. Over. Quickly. <laughs> and over to the other side. We normally stay there much longer, don't we? But I just want to thank you all for listening. I hope this helps you. Um, I look forward to future shows. I have so much to give you. And then I get to exercise myself too, don't I? So again, thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.